Good morning, this is Christian Primerts, Tribeca Trade Group, with a quick Monday morning video on index levels to watch for the week. So I try to do this every week because we get new value areas for the week. And I think it was pretty revealing uh, what I talked about last Monday where we opened up basically in value for the week and uh, we kind of stayed there. Um, you know, earning season I think definitely has an impact here. But uh, let's go over this week's value areas uh, as well as um, I'll start on the daily chart and we'll look at the monthly value area, which, um, you know, you do get a new monthly value area for the month of August. And it looks like for the most part, uh, we are starting inside value uh, in multiple time frames. So S&P, two levels to watch here. We are right at the, the upper uh, side of the value area. So your resistance is 2479.75 to the upside. Um, a lot of consolidation around the point of control. Remember, the point of control is where the majority of the volume happened in the previous time frame, so in July. So you're going to see a lot of consolidation around there. Uh, maybe a little bit of indecision so far that we've seen this in the first week of August. And then support is all the way down here. So that is the daily chart. If you go back to the, if you zoom in further to the one hour, so this is what we were talking about once we started the week last week, how we started the week in value. And uh, we basically chopped around. So really good support and resistance, uh, really uh, nice levels that, that uh, held up very well last week. This week, we're also starting the week in value. Look how much more narrow the value area is for this week. Again, why is that? Because it's based on last week and, and the range and the, the volume. So this is one standard deviation of the volume profile from last week. So it won't take much uh, for us to get above value. I, I would expect that we break one way or another this week. You could see that the last couple of weeks when you zoom out, uh, you've got a really wide value area. You've got a more narrow, more narrow, and it seems like we're, we're coming to a head or a decision point this week. So I would expect us, even though we're starting the week in value, I would expect us to, to, to get out one, one way or another. So for the week, 2475, excuse me, 2474.75, really the level to watch. I would set an alert there. I would also set an alert at 2469 and a half. Um, if you notice, it is not the same as we had last week. I, I think it's only 7% of the S&P reports this week. So, you know, we've had a couple weeks where it's about 30%. So it really starts to, to die down a little bit uh, this week in terms of earnings. Uh, so if we move to the five minute bar just for the day, so you can see what the value area is, it looks like you know we were trading higher most of the pre-market. We dipped into uh, into value now in the last uh, in the last half hour. So for today, 2474.50, I think that's very close to what I said on the hourly bar, uh, which is, yeah, 24, 2474.75. That's really the level I would watch for today. Uh, if we go over to NASDAQ, this one I'll use the Qs. And uh, let's start with the daily chart as well here. We're also starting the month. You know, we have we haven't really gone anywhere in August. Um, really, the level to watch in the Qs is, call it 146. And then on the downside is 139. Uh, 26, but a, a pretty wide, decent uh, wide value area for the queues for the month, which I think it will be difficult uh, for this to, you know, you know, I would watch, I guess, the top side 146 because we're a little bit closer to it. But again, it's going to be difficult for us to uh, to break one way or another, I think, for this month, especially with the seasonality in August and September, you know, obviously weaker or, or, or weaker months of the year. Uh, for the for the week, we're starting basically right at the top of value, 143.87, the level to watch there. And then on the five minute bar, it looks like we're starting above value. Your support will be 143.70 first, and then 143.78. Again, go back to that one hour chart, and you can see we're right on the top side of the value area. If this doesn't hold, then we might be chopping around for a bit. But again, just like the S&P, you can see a very narrow value area. So I consider that when the value area are very narrow, like this narrow. Um, it's going to have less of uh, less less of an impact, support and resistance wise. Um, if we head over to small caps, which 
you know, showed a little bit of a break last week. Uh, they broke below the value area. They also broke below the 50-day moving average. This one I would keep an eye on because it was a little bit weak. We actually tried to play this on Friday for a bounce, but there just wasn't enough momentum. I abandoned that trade pretty quickly. But um, resistance, I would watch 140.67 as well as that 50-day uh, that uh, moving average, which is about the same. If that doesn't hold, um, I don't have the 100-day moving average on this chart. But if I go over to IWM, you can see that we've got pretty decent support. Um, you know, you got the 100-day moving average of 138.39. Uh, IWM has been, uh, this, the small caps have been something that have been really just trading in a very tight, tight range all of 2017. So while it is concerning that it dips below the 50-day moving average, you get the 100-day, um, you know, not that far off from there. Uh, for the week, I would watch 141.45 to the upside and 139.15. Looks like we're starting right in the middle of that value area uh, in small caps. And then for the day, it looks like similar to NASDAQ, we're starting the day above value. I would watch support 140.30 and then 140.05. So a couple of things to kind of notice, you know, my what I've been saying for the last couple of weeks is one of the reasons why we've had this type of chop is because we've been getting this during earnings season. Uh, where there's a lot of digestion, a lot of figuring out which way the market wants to go. Um, you know, I think we did have a pretty good earnings season. Uh, and it seems like, um, you know, now that we could say this after it's been, I, I believe it's a good two thirds of the of uh, the S&B has reported. It seems like the companies that are doing really well, you know, especially on the on the sales and and on the on the bottom line, just aren't being rewarded. Um, and then those, you know, yet. And I think part of that is because there's been a decent run up in a lot of these names that have that have reported um, the the good earnings. So it's almost like the earnings are justifying the price. Uh, for the names that are missing, they're getting punished. Um, you know, AAOI was a good example of that towards the end of last week. Uh, what I would also, what I'm also just taking note of is, you know, again, so this is, you know, I, this is, I think, a good comparison, this earnings season between what January did. If you look at the beginning of, of earnings season for January, you know, for two weeks, we basically didn't move. Um, we had a little bit of a bigger range than what we're having now in the S&P, but, you know, basically, you know, from January 5th, to what the 23rd we didn't move over 40 basis points one one day um so it seems like that is going on as well um remember that what, what we did after that was we moved to the upside in january so after we got through that earnings season we did re, uh, resolve uh to the upside um, one thing i would also notice is you know financials financials uh reported uh First, you know, they're, they're always one of the first uh, groups to go, you know, so if you go back to like when JP Morgan and Bank of America earning, earnings happened on 714 and, and 718, um, you could see that we financials really haven't done much, you know, a little, little bit of a gap up and then move down. But it looks like they're, re, they're, they're also resolving themselves to the upside. So I think if you be patient we may see this in the overall S&P, a little bit of a chop. Remember again, that buyback plans are off for they're in closed periods for when a companies report earnings. So it doesn't provide that oomph that, um, that we've been getting all year long with buyback plans. And let's face it over the last couple of years. So while those plans are closed, it just doesn't seem like there's, there's decent momentum in, in the market or, or as those plans are turns off, those should start to come back online now this week, just like they did for financials and have been giving financials a lift. So we'll see if um, that'll be the case for the rest of the market for now. Uh, be patient and watch those levels that I mentioned. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great week.